welcome back now we have jumped off of the train and we are running through the subway is it really a subway though i guess hmm, it's hard to figure because on one hand it's not underground in fact this subway is suspended above the ground it's part of the midgar um, i guess the central spire it's supposed to be in traveling around it then i i, I don't know i guess the well running around in the plate it sort of operates like a subway being under the surface of the plate uh, whatever that's that's all irrelevant we're in a train tunnel in the original game when the characters leapt from the train they all sort of jumped together they i don't know i, I think maybe it's hard to remember but i think maybe they did jump at different times but they ended up being like 10 feet apart from each other so that makes some damn sense. But as soon as you ended up in the tunnel, all three characters were together and they set off on this trip through the tunnel together. We didn't have to go and meet up with Barrett somewhere down the line. He's close. Come on. Barrett! Barrett! Tifa! Could use some help here! We're coming! Make it quick! Should be some stairs over there! We'd better hurry. Yeah. I've had enough to deal with you damn robo bugs. I'm gonna rip off those spinning legs of yours He's one by one. This, I guess, is a tad bit more realistic. Our characters are not standing next to each other as soon as they jump off and they have to meet up. I ain't going down without a fight. Uh, that doesn't sound good. Let's go. Now, it is a little bit of a pet peeve of mine that the Shinra characters, the people like President Shinra and Heidegger, are a little bit too villainy for my taste. They were responsible for the destruction of the Mako reactor. Blowing up the way it did it wasn't Avalanche that did that in this game. And Heidegger in particular seems to stand there and laugh hysterically like some kind of a comic book villain. I guess they have some kind of a greater plan in mind, but it's a little obscure what it is right now. Oh, who cares? We can take them. Now let's confirm our position and get back on mission. That reactor's waiting. Looks like it's gonna be Plan E. Go on. Plan A was if everything went off without a hitch. From the station, it would have been a straight shot to the reactor. Didn't work out, but we knew going in we had to have alternatives. Backup plans, in case we had to get off early. From closer in to further out, B, C, D, and so on. Up to what? To E. Lucky us. Yeah! <laughs> You're damn right. Anyway, we were riding the train between Sector 4 and the main pillar when we had to bail out. And we ended up on the adjacent line, which should take us to Reactor 5. That's right. So for now, we follow the tracks. Not too far, though. Need to switch to a different route before we hit the station. Because you can bet your ass it's going to be crawling with security. All on high alert. Let's move. Our friends in Sector 5 marked the route, so don't worry about getting lost. It's a straight shot to victory, people. All we got to do is take it. You have nothing to worry about, sir. Preparations for the grand finale are proceeding without incident. I have the utmost confidence that everything will play out as you intended. Yes, of course. I will not fail you, sir. <sighs> sir, analytics reports that the results fall within the admissible range. However, the casualty rate significantly exceeds previous projections. Ah. 
Remind me what your job is. Is it to question the wisdom of your superiors and bemoan your personal hardships? Sir? Huh. Casualty rate. You think I care about the casualty rate? They're pawns in a greater game. If your stock runs low, then go round up more for Sector 3 or wherever else. Use your head and bring me solutions instead of problems for a change, yes? Sir. <sighs> it is so hard to find good help these days. Which is why the President ought to count his blessings. What would he do without me? <laughs> so there we go again with High Digger being a little bit too much of a villain here. Now, of course, he is a bad guy. Nobody would accuse the High Digger in the first game of being a good person. But you have to be a little bit more subtle than what we're seeing here. Now, I'm guessing there is some kind of a reason coming up on why he is such an asshole. But you got to be a little bit more subtle than that. I have a major dislike of the concept of antagonists being evil for the sake of being evil. Of course, you're going to need an antagonist, and the more you can view them as being evil, the more accepting a reader, player, viewer, whatever is going to have of doing bad things to that person. But the character is going to come across as being rather shallow if you can't establish good motivations for what they're doing. From their own perspective, an antagonist should be the hero of their own story. Now, the most simple way of creating motivation for an antagonist is just avarice. And perhaps that's what we're seeing here with Heidegger, but it's not coming across why he is so Machiavellian. When the time comes, remember, we just gotta follow the nose. What? Stamps nose. We look for graffiti, then head in whichever direction it snows points. But pay attention to railway signals too. You see blue lights, you go on the right. Interesting little bit of world building they have here, but Stamp is a cartoon dog which somebody has graffitied on the walls of this subway system. Now the direction that the dog is pointing, it's pointing its nose, is the direction which leads towards the Mako reactor. And I think it's other members of Avalanche, the other cells of Avalanche, or perhaps people that have sympathies to them, that went and posted this graffiti around. Kind of cool idea, the idea that you're hiding the uh, tools of Avalanche in plain sight. Nobody's going to look twice at the graffiti of a cartoon dog. In fact, I think the dog itself might be kind of a mascot of Shinra. Which I guess would make it less likely that Shinra would go around and paint over the damn thing. This game is coming across to me a little bit hit or miss when it comes to the design of the dungeons. Now, I think the actual dungeon design is pretty well, pretty good. But there's another aspect that you have to do if you're trying to establish a sense of realism. That you want to make the environments feel natural in some way. And now I don't mean natural as in like a forest. Like a subway can be considered natural by the definition that I'm using. I mean natural in the sense that it's a place that could exist in real life. You gotta check the signal, son. The signal. A subway is a situation where you can have long corridors where you don't really see a lot. Biggs is way ahead of us. Jesse was gonna back him up, so it wouldn't surprise me if he needs our help. So let's not keep him waiting. Right. Still, they need to add a number of little touches to make the environment feel more natural. It could be as something as simple as piled up boxes or a lived-in space, the benches perhaps, or the these spools of wire being in the middle of the, uh, being between the tracks. I guess somebody was supposed to be there and then they, working on the tracks or working on the wires and just left the supplies there that they weren't using at the time. 
All of these little touches make the environment feel more natural. Of course, this doesn't look like a real subway system, but it does feel like it belongs in the world that we're playing in right now. Now, there are other circumstances, like we had seen with the first Mako reactor, or we're going to see with the one we're approaching, where it perhaps doesn't really feel all that natural. There are long hallways that don't seem to have any purpose. Now, again, a long hallway that you're fighting things as you're running down makes sense when you're in a subway. Oh, missed the fire. It makes sense to have this kind of a long hallway in a subway. It feels natural because, well, it's a subway. But when we get to the Mako reactor, having long hallways that just attach to rooms that are really far away from the rooms we're already in don't really make any sense. Now, if they were to add little touches like impenetrable doorways or something like that to make the space feel like it has some sort of a purpose, make a long hallway feel like it has some purpose, then that would work. Because, I, I mean, sure, if rooms aren't necessarily going to be right next to each other, but why have this room here, then a long hallway with nothing, and then another room on the other side? It's a little weird. See these little work areas here? Now, I'm guessing these are the people who work on the subways. These are, like, offices or break rooms or storage rooms. I mean, you see the shelves there with all sorts of boxes and stuff. Nice little touch there. Outside of Jesse's house a few episodes ago was another one. It's, I mean, there was the house, but they have a little bit of property that extends outside of their house. No yard or anything like that, but has some stuff just sitting out there. Makes it feel a little bit more natural. It knows we trust. Good thing our colleagues put up all that stamp graffiti. Without it, we'd be lost for sure. Might we finally be escaping from the subway? Getting out of the subway in the original game didn't take very long. You'd have a couple of battles, but more or less you're just running down some hallways and then you reach the exit. So it's not really all that long. This game, of course, stretches everything out and we are in the subway for a while. Not to them complaining. They did have to add more. And they're adding more gameplay to it. So that's good. What's that? Nothing good. Guys? I think it might be a nest. All kinds of creepy crawlies make themselves at home in the plate. They'd get messed up even more by the Mako. Mako's at this? No. Not Mako. Shit. What? That black and white world of yours. You like it, huh? You know there's room for one more. I'll think about it. Well, there is a monster infestation in the subway system. That's a uh, little something extra. Not that I'm complaining. We needed a little something extra. And I guess this does kind of make sense that um, Shinra, as established in the original game, so, well, spoiler alert was doing a lot of experiments with different kinds of monsters. Now, use Mako to do experiments on monsters, or maybe generate them, or some kind of shit. But, well, all this work that they're doing with all these Mako reactors are going to result in some kind of... Oh, man! Cut Tifa in half! <laughs> no friendly fire. None of that, so you don't have to worry about any of that stuff. All right. Turns out this uh, whole thing where I go and I scan all of these enemies beforehand isn't really necessary. I mean, if you want to find out their weaknesses and stuff, you're going to want to do that. But they aren't really necessary for Chadley or whatever the hell his name is mission. This game is a little bit more difficult than I was expecting it to be. Now, the original Final Fantasy VII wasn't a particularly hard game. But I did have a little bit more trouble here than I was expecting, and it turns out that was entirely my own fault. See, the thing was, I had misunderstood the whole concept of weapon upgrades. Now, as your character gains experience points, they gain something called, I think it's called SP, which is something you can use to apply to your weapons to gain minor upgrades for them. 
Now, when you add a bunch of minor upgrades together, they become major upgrades, and I was avoiding doing it because I realized, or rather I had thought, that as the game progressed, I'd get new weapons, and I didn't want to use my character's accumulated SP points. I guess P means points, so that's redundant. But I didn't want to use the SP that I had accumulated on the first weapons. Sort of like in Final Fantasy XIII, I didn't want to use up all of my good materials to upgrade your starting weapons. Turns out that is unnecessary in this, because every weapon, even one you accumulate later on in the game, accumulates all the SP. So, let's say I had 50 right now. Both the sword I have now and the Buster Sword, which I'm not using, have 50 SP individually so it was kind of pointless me saving it so anyway I was limiting myself I eventually realized my error and started upgrading my weapons which made later parts in the game easier so, <laughs> chalk it up to inexperience. Maybe I should have read some guides or paid attention to the tutorial or something like that. Okay, so we have a mini-boss here. Now, perhaps these gas trike, whatever the hell, things were actually enemies in the original game. It's possible that there was some enemy, I just don't remember, some insignificant mob enemy that you just sort of stumbled across and fought that weren't really important in the original game, but I don't remember them. But now they seem to be attracting a little bit more attention. The main enemies were fighting while traveling through this area, and they even added a mini-boss here. Not a terribly difficult fight, just something you need to slash at until it dies. These things are weak against fire. <laughs> it's a good thing I got fire. Mini-bosses are always something that I feel like that a lot of games, especially nowadays, don't really utilize properly, or, or at times don't even utilize at all. I mean, a mini-boss doesn't really have to attract a lot of attention, it just needs to be something that breaks up the kind of gameplay loop of running standard fight, running standard fight, possibly a little puzzle thing, standard fight, adds with something with a little bit more difficulty to it and perhaps gives you a little bit of reward for reward when you finally beat it. Maybe if they were going to give you a new piece of materia instead of just having it in a treasure chest, maybe I have it drop off the boss. The kind of thing everyone should do. Those things really creep me out. A train's gonna get derailed by them one of these days. Shinra should do something. Of course, I suspect you're always going to have the problem with sticking mini-bosses in a game where the mini-boss might potentially just use up all your resources or almost kill your characters, and then how do you continue after that? So they got their resting bench and potion machine here. A little bit of a cheat, I guess. They don't have to worry so much about balancing the mini-boss to being a reasonable challenge if they can just sort of stick something like this after it where you can replenish your stock of potions and whatnot. But, you know, you gotta do what you gotta do. It's weird that they couldn't find some way of having the other characters sit down next to him. Did Tifa and Barrett just stand there and watch him sit the entire time. I don't know, it just seems a little bit weird. Did they, like, talk about anything, or... Hell, I don't know. This weird jump was on account of... Uh, this being two different gameplay sessions. Mashed together. There's good old Stan. Check his nose. This isn't bad, you know. Yeah, they really captured the essence of corporate propaganda. Check it out. I guess Shin was doing something about those monsters after all. Doing a half-man job, looks like.
It does appear Shinra is doing something about the monsters, but you'd think they could be doing a better job. They don't really seem to care really at all about the people that live in Midgar. They have some, I don't know, greater purpose in their own mind at least. A new Shinra enemy, a flamethrower trooper. Strangely enough, they seem to be weak against fire. Which I guess makes sense, just because you have a flamethrower doesn't mean you want it shot at you. It takes a little bit getting used to, to control three characters at once. Now, in this subway is the first time that we really had the chance to have three characters under our control at once. So it's fortunate that you're able to nearly pause the gameplay while choosing certain actions. But managing the three in real time is quite a feat. So, I don't know, the, the AI doesn't seem to be too willing to use the special abilities of the characters. They don't seem to want to fire off magic or use healing spells or anything like that. You have to command them to. So you sort of need to stop the gameplay for a second in order to do that kind of thing. I guess it works, and there really wasn't a good way around it. The Gambit system from 12 wouldn't have been that effective in this kind of situation, because it's too much extra stuff that they'd have to ask a person to do, and I guess this game wanted to avoid that kind of thing. Also, the system in the system in 13, where you didn't have direct control over any of the characters, definitely wouldn't have worked. So, I guess we got what we got. There's an old rail yard not far from here. What we're looking for is somewhere inside. And that is? A secret passageway. We've compiled our report on Avalanche's combat capabilities and our... <clears throat> report, report, report. What good do you think a damn report will do anyone? I don't... Have you already forgotten the war with Wutai? An enemy spared is an enemy who will repay your kindness with blood. We must crush them thoroughly and completely, without hesitation or mercy. Shinra cannot and will not settle for anything less. Will you? But, but sir... If so, I can only assume that you and your men no longer wish to serve in your current positions. Is that correct? We'll prepare the prototype in Section E for immediate deployment. Right now, damn it! <clears throat> another day, another victory. How do I do it? <laughs> Get back! Uh, uh, <laughs> Take your best shot, asshole! 